name is Hatem Matar. I'm the world's first Arab pit master. I grew up in Dubai, I've been here almost more than 20 years. We're at the Matar Farm residence, which was the idea before, long before there was a, a Matar Farm uh, brand. The Matar Farm uh, was an idea, uh, and I'd like it to always still be an idea. Where your food comes from, how long it takes to make your food, how long the cycle is to make the one thing you're eating for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and obviously, you know, uh, the fruits, vegetables, livestock, all of that stuff, and a sense of community, a sense of family. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we would get the barbecue started. A, a day in the life on the farm. So we're we're a non we're a non digital household. The girls have phones to keep in touch, but if they're in the house, they're actually in a place where they're inaccessible to them. Uh, the girls have to wake up. They've got dogs to feed. They've got chickens to feed. They've got ducks. They've got rabbits. They've got sheep. They've got a goat. And uh, when their friends come over, they're like, oh man, I did this on Fortnite. Uh, what level are you on? She's like, we have goats. And so when the parents come over, the parents are like, hey man, thank you for having them. And they, and they hear that, bah. And they, Is that your neighbors? I'm like, no man, we got goats. They're like, goats? It, it's an idea that maybe those kids, when they go home, they're not gonna get a goat and put it in the balcony, but they're like, mom, I wanna plant a tomato. Can you believe it's been, what, three years now? Remember when the, the Time Out Awards were and then I saw you there? Yeah. And all you sold out, all your brisket and I was yeah. doomed about it? Yeah. Yeah, it's been a long time. Uh, I, I, remember, I remember that day, we were, I was so nervous. It's because it was the Time Out Awards, right? So all of Dubai's best chefs, all of uh, the, you know, the who's who of F&B, I met you, I met Shab, yeah. and Spiro. Yes. And then you're the only person that didn't get to have any. <laughs> <laughs> When we were at the farm, I was saying uh, the evolution of the Matar farm, when we started telling people our story, nobody was taking us seriously. When we told people we were on the BB menu, they're like, ah, sit down, get this, <laughs> get this guy, get this guy a coffee. It's a real pleasure, you know why? But like when we, obviously we're also homegrown, right? Yeah. We just opened up so about three months before you. Yeah. And it took us a long journey to, to build this. So obviously it's three floors, the yeah. art gallery and all this to support somebody who, who, who does homegrown things in the UAE uh, was always our intention. Even the, just the concept of BBs and the, what we stand for and what we're here for, mm. we're here for the community. Just because it said Motor Farm Brisket and I appreciate you putting that it wasn't just, it didn't say smoked brisket, yes. it said Motor Farm Brisket. It was such a big deal for us. It was because you, you gave us a chance really, so. Pound it. Very good. Fantastic. Awesome. You never, never, under any circumstances, do you light a barbecue for one person or for a sandwich, right? So you light the barbecue, it's for a group of people, it was usually family, um, and then friends would come over, and I started uh, smoking, which is completely different than grilling, by the way. What we call barbecue here in the Middle East is what people actually call uh, grilling. So anything above 300, Fahrenheit is called grilling, uh, high heat. Anything below that is typically low and slow barbecue. And that term comes from American cuisine. Barbecue is the kind of cuisine that you get your fire started, you prep your meat, and then once you've figured out temperature and you've set it there, you actually close the lid and you leave it for hours at a time. And I started that after a trip to Texas for my uh, oil and gas job, I went, I had brisket for the first time, and when I had it, I was like, where has this been all my life? You know what I mean? It's not something that, 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 that existed here back in 2014. From how much I like brisket, I was actually buying frozen brisket from the place and flying back with it to Dubai. So obviously you get to Jamarek and uh, the customs guys, you know, they, they wave you into the x-ray machine. And in the x-ray machine, there's this giant hunk of meat. And the guy's like, Salam alaikum wa makalikum salam. He's like, Shandek, uh, in your suitcase. And I'm like, um, meat. And he's like, well, you don't have meat at your house? Like, you can't get meat from the supermarket? So I'm like, it got so embarrassing every time I would fly back. And I was doing this monthly. Sometimes the guys would recognize me, you know what I mean? The guys would be like, 
Hi, Hatem, Kevin, Hal. I'm like, yeah, Alhamdulillah. They're like, you got meat in your, in your suitcase? I'm like, ugh. So I started messing around with the barbecue and I got myself a smoker. I probably made triple digit kilograms of horrible meat. All of my crew is always hungry. Tell the boys to come over. I'm experimenting on them, but they have no idea. Until eventually it got to the point where they're like, bro, that's not bad, you know? And uh, when it got to be not bad, more people started coming. And then when it got to be good, people that I didn't know started coming. Then when it got to be excellent, people started calling my work phone and saying, hello, is this Bantan Farm? I'm like, what? Like, because I, I'm thinking of the, people are thinking that it's a brand, right? I'm like, no, this is Hatem Matar. And I'm in the middle of a meeting or something, I'm presenting, I'm wearing a suit. And they're like, bro, we want to order barbecue. My, my cousin had it at your place the other day and we'd like to order for next week. And I'm like, bro, that's, we're not a place. You can come to the house, Alan West Island, but we're not a brand. So eventually we took it seriously enough um, and I found wonderful partners that kind of believed in the dream and off of a, a, just a, a handshake. So I went to Texas. I went to apprentice at Texas's oldest smokehouse. It was called Southside Market, 1882. They were a butcher shop first and their uh, brisket was always left over and then they turned it into obviously what we know now is the, the, the gold medal of, of barbecue. When uh, Brian Bracewell uh, God bless him. I told him if, he, if I named my first son Brian, it wouldn't be enough. Took me under his wing, taught me his secret recipe. Um, literally, I apprenticed with him for a summer, with him and his, and his people. So you can imagine how nervous I was being this Arab guy in the middle of Texas, learning to do barbecue. Would they accept me? Would they think it was okay? But, wallah al-azim, we had nothing in common but our love of barbecue. We're still friends to this day. Uh, we spent an entire summer together barbecuing, paddling the river, uh, staying up at night exchanging stories like, tell me a little bit about where you're from, tell me about your family. We figured out and we learned about each other over barbecue. I came back here with my, a feather in my cap. You know, Brian told me, uh, you're ready, you're making good barbecue. And the first couple of times, obviously, when you first put a brisket because you're feeding actual people, I was always checking on it and he's like, this is, th as, this is as good as my Texan accent gets. But he was, I kept on opening the door and he's like, Hatem, what are you doing? And I'm like, um, I'm, I'm checking to see if it's cooking well. He's like, Hatem, if you're looking, you ain't cooking, baby. Close that door. He closed the door. So you set the brisket up, 18 hours later, you take it out. You have to be confident enough in your fire and the spice and the trim and everything. And so I came here, set the brisket down, no looking, all cooking. And here we are, three years later. Uh, you know, Badia is the first the vertical farm in the region. We've set up we set it up in downtown Dubai, and the idea is to have somebody like you or others to come in and visit it, and you know, take the fresh uh, crops and and you know, uh, have it and eat it immediately. Wow, man, my God, it's it's, it's still exciting, still. Uh, we're learning every day, you learn with the plants, you, some, some plants like to germinate, some don't like to germinate. In a controlled environment, you control all the different inputs. Mm. By going from the irrigation, the time of irrigation, what's in the water, what's the nutritional formula, mm. what's the humidity, what's the temperature, what is the dar carbon dioxide, what is the oxygen, Oof. what is the uh, different light spectrums. Add all of this together, that becomes our formula, our IP. Yeah, yeah. And then here we've got the packing. So once the trays okay. are taken off the system, mm. we come, we put them here on these rollers, and then we pack them into the boxes. Okay. And this is how the final product looks like. That's the first box over here. Ah, there it is. It says Jumeirah. Okay, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay, this fantastic. Is it. So this is how it goes to the customer, and it would last one week, ten days, as long as they're watering it daily. This is what uh, the seeds look like, sah? So, this with that. Bravo. Right? Exactly. Yeah, you're definitely not kissing anybody after this. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Wow. Strong and mighty. Yeah, really. Man, thank you so much. Testing and exploring. Thank you so much. Great. Good to have you, man. Thank you, man, after All so right. long. 
I look forward to, uh, to the, the Matar Badia to the, to the break. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, to all the collaboration. Yeah, yeah, to all the stuff that we're gonna do yeah. together. Skydiving. So my cousin uh, Tarek, that was on the jump with me, got me into skydiving. Uh, I got him into combat sports. You can tell we're both obviously adrenaline junkies. Um, but skydiving to me is the, even the morning that you wake up is a mental challenge. It's not physically taxing on the body for me yet because I'm not that good. But the mental challenge of waking up, going actually going to sleep at night. Um, I'm still scared. I'm still scared the day that I'm going. I'm still scared on the way to the drop zone. I'm scared when I put on my parachute. I'm scared when, you know, my, my cousin, he's all smiles, he's high-fiving, and he looks at me and I'm like, this is horrible. But the point of it is that I'm, my brain is telling me I can't, right? My brain tells me, you can't do this. And it is me every single time imposing myself on my own mind, saying, yes, I can, and doing it. A lot of people say, oh, you can't do this. Oh, you won't be, or you won't, or you just in the negative. And if you hear that enough, you start believing it. And then if there's, you have a big enough circle of people that support you, they say, yes, you can, but your own brain is saying you can't, then who are you trying to convince? Yourself first. So if I can jump out of a plane at 13,000 feet, um, and you can convince your brain in those situations that you can. I don't think there's anything that I can't do. Building your fire every single time is the moment of truth. Once you've got your fire, the satisfaction is the look on people's face. <laughs> and <co> <laughs> pow! Yes.